this episode, we are speaking with LTU member Nadia Charret, who shares her experience with CTF FCA's Project Overseas. Welcome, Nadia. Now, tell us about your experience last summer in the summer of 2023 with CTF FCA's Project Overseas. Well, it's it's a hard thing just to lump up in a thing, but I guess the first word that comes to mind is it was life changing. I and uh, I I really had to reevaluate who I was throughout that whole process because it's not something that it's not like a one shot thing. It's a whole it's pretty much a whole year experience because you when you get selected, you start right away in February meeting your team and you're already starting to plan what you're going to be doing um overseas. But I, I, if if anybody's like me, I'm a, I'm a visual, so it's difficult for me to kind of. It was hard for me to like m- like visualize what I was going to be doing, so I had to grab. That was a big. I think that was the hardest hurdle is trying to realize how I was going to teach, and I've never taught adults, so that okay. was completely going out of my comfort zone. Oh and, yes, okay. And going to a different country teaching adults, that was the second hurdle, right? And. Um, so it, it, I, I, you know, you go through all kinds of emotions. I went through my imposter uh, emotions, like thinking, oh, "What am I doing? Who do I think I can tell them what to do? And am I that, you know, am I that comp- competent for as a teacher?" And so you, I find that it's a, it's a process because you have to really reevaluate yourself before you go there. I really think that. Like I had to reevaluate myself as a white woman, right? And mm-hmm. and going into another country, you know, and I didn't want to feel like dictating to them or anything like that. I, I really wanted it to feel like a partnership. Right. But at the same time, we're not the same level of not necessarily I'm higher or lower, it's just different, right? It, it's exactly. just a different um uh, aspect. So um I found so all that challenging. Then we got to Ottawa and I found at Ottawa. I felt a little bit more comfortable, like I could actually visualize it because they had a lot of uh, pictures and things and they were in groups and they had all these team building activities. So I saw the first couple of months where we were learning and going through all that process, getting to know my team and and right. bonding with them before we get over there, because that's, you know, you, you find yourself intensely with three other women that you don't know anything about. So it's really good that we did that because we sort of, when we met up in Ottawa, it's, it was like coming back with my friend, you know? And I found that CTV, uh, CTF and FCE, Project, Project Overseas, when we brought everybody together and the way they explained it and what our role was, it really helped me centralize myself and what my objectives were and made me more sensitive to what, what I was doing. And, and, and it's not a trip. Like they kept reminding us, we're not yes. going on a trip. We're going there. <laughs> By as, any means. Yes, exactly. We're there uh, as, um, as, as, as facilitators, as you know, and you're so working and mm-hmm. working. Yes, you're working. Yeah. And it is hard work. <laughs> That's something that you have to keep in mind. It's not something wasn't as easy. And I know one of the girls that I was with said, mentioned that I didn't think it was going to be this hard. But once I was mm-hmm. there, it, it was hard work, but I didn't feel it. I personally didn't feel it as much. I just go, went with the groove. I think I felt it after. <laughs> ah, so interesting. Okay. Yeah, I get, the adrenaline was there and yeah. Um, yeah, you get into it. And, you know, I had highs and lows when I was there too. So mm-hmm. it, it was, it, it was, it was a complete experience. I really, really enjoyed it. I'm really happy I did it. I think it, it's, it's something if, it's something that people should do to really understand who they are. I think it's really, um, so it's good for me and it was good to do what we did. Right. We created a partnership, right? Yes. Cause those are a lot of new situations for you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Adults going to a new place and spending a lot of time with a lot of people that you don't know. That's so interesting. And you were saying that afterwards, it was kind of afterwards where, was it because you took a step back and like, wow, did I just do that? Is like, is yeah. that what you felt? Afterwards? I know. Well, afterwards, I because uh, my oh, my husband turned sixty last year. Okay. Our 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 thing is that every time we turn a, a zero, we do something yeah. like we do a trip that's out, out of our comfort zone. Like we do something special, right? 
Yeah. And we were supposed to go to Peru because that was his dream. But I said, well, since we're in Africa, why don't we do a safari? Because that's since that was part of our bucket list. So that's what we did. So I, when I finished at Benet, I went to uh, Johannesburg because I didn't know the dates when we booked. Because you have to book ahead, right? Yeah. And so we had like five days. I slept because <laughs> I was so tired. I hadn't realized how tired I was. And I was and it I, and it like hit me while I was there those seven days. I was so glad that I had had five days before I went off to do our safari to really reflect on what just happened and everything. Wow, that so it was really cool. yeah, yeah. It was really a. It's like wow, I just did that. I I I I was part of this. It's it's big. It's something that. Like, and I, I'm happy to have done it. Like, I, I'm really like, as, as a role model for my own children, I guess, too. Of course, of course. It sounds like both you and your husband are are adventurous in the sense yeah. the fact that you do that, yeah. that, you take the time to think about what would we like to do, you know, something that's different. So that's really cool. Yeah, and absolutely. I can totally see that. Like, sometimes we think about the difference that we're going to make or what we're going to learn, but it's a personal journey, probably even more than anything else. It, it is. It's a very yeah. big personal journey. I yeah. think it also had to do, I think I had spoken to you before, like before I applied to, to it just happened to show up on my thing because of my daughter who's adventurous like us. I guess we gave her that gene. And, yeah. and she, she, she writes letters to her father. They have this, this letter thing where they answer each other's question. And the question she had was, who do you admire most in the world? Oh. And she wrote mom because she has attitude. And I was like, taken aback by that because I felt like I didn't measure up to what she felt for me. You know what I mean? Oh. And so that when that CFTF application showed up, I'm like, oh yeah. Cause I, I felt like I, I, cause of COVID, I felt myself coming back home more and not being as adventurous as I used to be. Sure. Yeah. And then I said, you know what, I need to come out of my comfort zone and and explore world again and not be so hidden inside again and be the role model that my daughter thinks I am. Right. So that was the, so I threw myself into it, not regretting it one bit because it was the best thing for me because it helped me come back out again. Does yeah. that make sense? Oh, it makes total sense. And I, I agree as a parent, the, the how the way our children view us or who we want to become because we have kids. It's, it's, it's mind blowing. Yeah. <laughs> it's very hard. <laughs> yeah. But it's so beautiful. And I agree with your daughter. I think your mom, I think her mom has great, a great <laughs> attitude and is very courageous. So kudos to you. And you were talking about with CTF FCA, they've been doing this for years and years. So they have, they know how to go about doing this. And it sounds like they really take the time to start talking about it early on to get you kind of thinking about it. And they give you time to bond as a team. So that's wonderful. And how did you go about applying? So you, you heard about it and how did you go about applying for this? this well, office? I saw, like, I had never heard of it before, to be honest with you. Never, ever. I had never heard about it. Nobody in my entourage had ever done it. And it was really an email. And I, I usually saw, I'm terrible with emails. I'm the queen of the worst for emails. So it was there. And I, it, you know how you say things are meant to be? I yes. just saw it and I read it for the first time and I was reading oh. it and it, it, it in France, it was interpellé. so it really spoke to me. Like it, it, I was like, wow, this sounds really cool. This sounds interesting. This is what I need right now. It, it was really calling for what I was looking for in myself at the moment, yes. you know, you know, yeah. you, I've been teaching for, for a long time and, you know, I've been teaching in the same grade for a long time too. And it's, it, we're in a profession that really doesn't, <laughs> How do we say it? Tell, you know, say that we're doing good. You know what I mean? It's not right. really that our profession doesn't like, and I don't need a tap on the back or anything like that, but you never know where you're at in your career. Right. Yeah. And I guess I needed something to do more. Like I needed to do something more in my, my process as an educator. Right. So I guess that too was the other reason that when I read that, I was like, okay, this could be interesting yeah, with adults, it could be, you know, at first I thought it was with children, to be honest with you. When I first read it, I thought I was going to be teaching children in, in Africa. So when I found out it was adults, oh, I said, oh, okay, that's not, it's okay. We'll still keep going. But at first I thought it was with children. I misread the, the, the description. So you apply, it's a long application. You have to really uh, describe different things uh, and tell all about your experiences and things like that. And I send it off. And it's interesting because when I send it off, I knew I was going. 
It's I don't know why oh, I felt that it. Way. Wow. I did. I was like, I am going. I didn't even think that there would be other applicants. It was the <laughs> weirdest thing. I really thought I was going. So when he called me, I was kind of shocked. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> You're like, of course I am. I of course I am. Call me. <laughs> so when he told me there was a lot of applicants, I went, oh, <laughs> that's when. And I guess also that validates, right? That you got yeah. chosen amongst other peers. Sure. So that too helped me a lot too. Cause I was like, okay, I, I'm not so bad at what I do after all, you know? Yeah. And, and so it, it was a, it was a nice, it was a great feeling. It helped a lot with self-esteem and, and who you are and, and your process and all that stuff. So I, I really enjoy it. It was a, it was a nice feeling, even though I thought I knew I was going. <laughs> was nice. I love that. It, it sounds like it was like everything. It was almost like the timing for, for yeah. you, your life, the timing, um, the opportunity, everything just worked out. And yeah, I it was just the perfect that way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I got the best team. <laughs> you got, Oh, well, that's great. And what's interesting, you know, you were saying that, um after covid you kind of wanted to, to get out there a little bit and and i would have to say that we did get a lot of applicants in the recent years um more so than we used to get prior to uh, the pandemic we would get sometimes one sometimes two three but we've been getting more and more and i think that speaks to a lot of teachers are feeling that way like they kind of want to Re do something different, reach out, um, stretch a little bit. So it's really interesting. So I'm glad it worked out for you. That's really cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And if you can describe, um, it must be so different, but how the education system in Benin and in Quebec, how they are different. Well, that's, that's the key that, well, I, obviously we didn't go into the classroom, so we had to kind of get it through our workshops, what was going on. And yeah. when we were going there, um, you saw that it, what surprised me the most is there huge amount of men in education okay. and our, our, um, our group that we were doing, were really pre pre K kindergarten grade one, like grade one, grade two, because it's not the same system. Right? They don't, it's not quite like grade one, grade two, but to describe it as to compare to us. Right. And I was, it was really concentrated and, you know, us in education, mostly it's women, right. At the lower yes. level, we don't have very many men. And there was like the opposite. There was like more, there was a lot of men. Okay. So I thought that was like, wow. Okay. That's interesting. And, um, the, and they chose what they wanted us to teach. So I thought that was interesting because a lot of it was equality, inequality, you know, uh, equity and, um, and, uh, special needs and, and those kind of things that they really wanted us to focus on. So I thought that was interesting because Benet right now, what I understood is they're going through a reform okay. and uh, they, they want changes. And so, um, one of the participants was in one of my groups and we I don't know, we were talking about whatever. And he, he, um, he looked at me, he's a principal, they're called superintendents or something like that. And he was telling me, you don't understand. He says, things have to change. So the people that were there want change. Right. And there was like, we had a hundred participants, all of Bene. So there's much more than that of teachers. Right. So the, they, they want change. So they were there to learn. I think the first group, they weren't a hundred percent sure what we were going to do for them. Yes. You could tell they were hesitant. And, and I, I understood that because you, we, it was the first group that ever came to Bene. Uh, to do this kind of project and they probably I don't know my you know they probably have some bad experiences from the past yeah. I, I'm just guessing I don't know mm -hmm. but you could tell and then the second group came in and they were full in so uh -huh. I guess they they got they heard about us and yes. they told, talked to the next group and then they were more willing to participate because you saw a switch it happened like by midweek you could tell that the participants were really into it now right hey okay. and so the and the subjects were coming like I was using we were using more sensitive subjects by the end of the week and the openness started happening then so I thought that was really interesting so what I got from like I did one activity which really showed me a little bit of what's going on in their schools um, I did this thing where the the teachers had to the group had to come together and decide what were the rules for the whole school that they can agree on and that needed to to be s the same and they had to build it together and make like a matrix. Okay. And so I had had them put on posters and they had to talk to each other and they had to negotiate and stuff like that and it was interesting listening to them talk. So you saw that the big issues was classroom sizes was a big okay. thing. 
Mm-hmm. Um, the lack of supplies, the things that they had, um, and also communal, uh, so like you, you got the sense that the fa- the schools were very, um, the, the kids, the parents, the families had a big impact on what goes on in the classroom. Okay. So the community was, and depending where they were from, and it was, hygiene was a huge issue for them. Okay. And so it, it, it was interesting, like, um, one thing that I that struck me and I made a comment about them, they were all like taken aback, is one of them they kept saying, You need to share your 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 lunches. You need to share. And I said, That's interesting. I said, in Canada, it's the opposite. You're not allowed to share. Mm-hmm. And they were all looking at me like, What are you crazy? Like, that's terrible. I said, Well, it's because us, it's allergy reasons. Right. And allergies were not something they were concerned with there. It was so more it making was, it fair for everybody to have something to eat. Because not everybody had something to eat. Obviously. That's so interesting. They don't have technology like we have in our classroom. Then we all have smart boards, but they, they don't have smart boards. Like they might have a chalkboard. Like I brought a big box of chalk and it was a big gift that I gave to, okay. to the group. And they asked us to show them technology, but they didn't even have technology to show the technology. So that was interesting. Yeah. So I was like, okay. But then I, I was showing them other ways to use technology in the classroom that they could use because they all had they all had phones. Okay. So I said you could use for music, for things. And so we adapted so they could uh, come to that. We talked about education for boys and girls. So that was a big issue as well, because it's a different way of looking at things, right? Mm-hmm. So I had to introduce in- equity, in, in uh, equality and all that in the classroom. And we were talking about And that was a big topic and we had big discussions and you could see they want to change. There's changes coming through. You you can't go in there and change everything and change this mindset. You just, I I found that it's like putting a seed in the ground and letting them grow with it because not so long ago, like I said, there's a reform. They were often talking about corporal punishment. Like they were still, it's still happening. It's frowned upon. It's, they're trying to get rid of it, but it still exists in the education system in Benet. Okay. But it's frowned upon. But mm-hmm. you could hear it through some of the participants that it's still something that's there. Mm-hmm. We had it too, not so long ago, right? I, like, sure. Our, yeah. I remember a teacher when I was young who used that. And mm-hmm. so, and I'm not that old, right? right. And so, it, it, us too, we went through a process saying, we can't do that to children. Children don't learn that way. And yeah. they're going through the same process as well. People that were there wanted to learn, wanted to make a difference, were open-minded, wanted to hear the different things. It was very interesting. And there, there were, some of them were like in awe about certain things, like, <laughs> like cooking was really a big topic at one point because women are the cook, they, they're supposed to cook there. Okay. And, but there are men who want to start cooking, but they get frowned upon by family wow. members. So I thought it was interesting. So, so interesting. There, you can see there's a change coming upon. Yes. Generation. And there's a resistance. Yes, Some people are very resistant yes. to things changing. Well, that affects education too, right? Sure. So I thought that was interesting. And and often sometimes, like, I, I don't know if uh, you know Elise Gravel. She's an author, a French-Canadian author. She writes a lot about... Uh, non genre like uh, things that are um, not don't don't not gender specific right yes so i read a story called je peux and it's it and i showed it on um on my ipad so i was going to show them that they can use other technologies like a phone an ipad and read a story to the kids if you don't have it right yes so we were reading this story and i was a, a sh- they were shocked about two images in the story and in je peux there's a little girl who's uh, an adventurist and a lot of the women were frowned upon that one picture because they were saying women in Africa can't be adventurous. Mm. I thought that was interesting too. So women don't have felt that they didn't have the same rights and privileges that they could, they wanted. And and so that was an interesting topic. And the men around were like listening, going, Oh, you know, like they, it was an awakening. And then there was also the men, there was a little girl, well, a little boy who was dressed in a girl in a girl's outfit. And it was interesting. The conversation that came out of that. They agreed that as a kid play rolling. Yeah. Wear a dress. No problem. It's that they couldn't grow up and do it. <laughs> ah, okay. And so, so that okay. also brought a discussion and it was very interesting. And you can tell there's an, there's an opening because even our, in our, in my school, we talk about the little boy wearing a dress has, there are families that are still having difficulty with it. So we're not that far off. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was, so the same book can bring in a lot of controversy in both our countries. So we both have the same 
same pro like not problems but ideologies that differ right and the yes. acceptance level that is different yes so it was interesting it was fun it, it was fun to 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 be part of that and to and to be able to share in that and 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 just I, I I didn't see it me wagging my finger. It was opening conversations, and that was fun. Yeah, and I think that's mm -hmm. where I told you at before. I said I started the week crying because <laughs> it was hard mm -hmm. trying to with language barrier because uh, my French is not Parisian French; it's French can it's France Quebecois there, and so I don't think they understood me, and I had a hard time understanding them. And then eventually, I I was able to understand them, and we were able to communicate, but it was more academic at the beginning and at the end it was more cultural um mm -hmm. changing the classroom culturally right and i felt that then it was like wow like i feel like i'm doing something now like i feel like i'm opening conversations That's and that beautiful. was really that was a really i think that was my highlight yes i'm sure and so what advice would you give to someone who would be interested in applying Perfection. That's funny because the girl that's going this year, she, yeah. we talked. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because she was a friend of a friend who knew I was, I went. And so we had a conversation because she was hesitant actually. And we talked and I told her all about my experience and I told her, yes, it is difficult. I know there are things that you're going to have to go through, but I tell you it's worth all of that in the end. I think the, the most important thing to do as if you're going there is to really get bond with your team. I think yeah. the team is what's going to make or break the situation. Mm -hmm. I think, so you don't feel alone too. Yeah. And I think that was probably also my saving grace because we had such a great team. And, you know, there's days you came like my first day, I, it did not go well. I know it didn't go well. I was not at my finest moment. I know I was, I lost complete control of the whole situation. It just did not go well. Right. Yeah. So we came back to the hotel and it, you know, it's really hot too. That's another thing you have to adjust to. And so we come back to the hotel, we go and shower, we, and we meet up together and we talk. And I told them, I said, I really didn't feel, and and they together helped me restructure my next workshop, rethink my things. Like we were able to, and then we would work together, putting posters together and help each other. And so we'd always, and then my, my, um, my, the person in charge, Nicole was the, um, in my room with me, we shared our room together and she would give me pep talks. It's okay. You've got this, you know? So I think that if I hadn't had a team like that, I don't know if it would have been the same experience. Mm. I think it gave me the confidence to keep going afterwards. So that's my biggest advice is get with your team and work together, like be a team. Yes. I think it's, it may, and especially you're in a different country, different, everything's different food, everything. You have to adjust to a lot of stuff. And having a team that supports you, whether it's good or bad or ugly or whatever, it it really helps you make the experience even more enriching, right? Absolutely. Yes. Nadia, thank you so much for sharing your experience. Um, and I know people can apply. Usually it's in the fall, I would say, uh, November, December, yeah. when the applications come out. So anybody who's interested in applying, keep your eyes open. You will see it on uh, the QPAT social media. You should be receiving an email from your local union as well. And if you have the the urge, why not? Give yeah. it a try. Yeah, I think so. I think, it sh I think people should at least do it once in their lifetime. I think, I know sometimes you have, families, your children. I think that might be harder. One of my, uh, one of the girls that went with me had younger children. So, you know, it was difficult for her, but she's back. She's the leader this year. And oh, I'm, really? Yeah, Great. yeah. She's one of, and she's going back to Benek. She, she already knows it. She's going to lead the group. So she's, I'm so proud of her. We've continued communicating with each other. We meet uh, once in so once in a while and have a Zoom and talk about our, how life is going and everything because they're from different parts of Canada. So it's really a lot of fun. Mm -hmm.